Are you studying mathematics at the secondary level? Then, Timoy Y YouTube channel is for you. Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, what we're going to look on is the May, June, January 2019 CSEC Mathematics Past People. Question number one. Negative three all squared plus negative two all squared is equal to now negative three all squared means negative three times negative three plus negative two all squared means negative two times negative two so negative three times negative three that's going to give us positive nine plus negative two times negative two that's going to give us positive four and nine plus four that's going to give us 13 so our answer for number one is going to be c number two what number when added to one and one third gives two now one and one third means one plus one third now what can we add to one third that will give us one we can add two thirds right Now you see that two thirds plus one third, that's one, plus one more, that's going to give us two. So we'll answer for number two, that's going to be B, which is two thirds. Number three, 11.1 .1 divided by 0 0.01 is equal to, the approach that we're going to use to solve in this question is to rewrite the question as a whole number. So they give us one, point one divided by zero point zero one now zero point zero one is the divisor and eleven point one is the dividend what can we multiply the divisor by to give us a whole number we can multiply the divisor by 100, right? And if we multiply the divisor by 100, we have to multiply the dividend by 100 to keep the question an equivalent question, right? So 11.1 .1 times 100, that's going to result into 1,000. 110 divided by 0 0.01 multiplied by 100 that's going to result in 1 and as you know any number divided by 1 gives you back itself so our answer here is going to be 1110 which is c question 4 12 and a half percent of a sum of money is 40. What is the sum of money? We're going to let the sum of money be n, right? Now, 12 and a half percent means 12 and a half over 100. Remember, a half as a decimal is just 12, is just 0.5. So it's going to be 12.5 over 100 times some number, some money, sorry, and that money is N, and that must result in $40, right? So that's what this statement here is saying, algebraically. Now we can solve this algebraically by the, just multiplying both sides by 
the inverse of 12.5 over 100, which is 100 over 12.5. So therefore, N is going to equal to 40 times 100 all over 12.5 and 40 times 100 over 12.5 is going to result in 320 so therefore n is equal to 320 dollars and our answer is going to be b question 5 a test was marked out of 80. A boy scored 60% of the marks and the test. How many marks did he score? Now, if he scores 60%, 60% as a fraction is 60 over 100. times 80. Zero, cancel out zero here. And zero in the numerator here, cancel out zero in the denominator. And what we are left back with is six times eight, and that's going to give us 48. So our answer for number five is going to be B. Number six, the square root of 81 lies between a, 13 and 14. Now the, squ the square of 13, that's going to give us 161. And the square of 14, that's going to give us 196. So of course, A is the answer here. Number seven, which of the following set is defined by X is an element of Z, such that x is greater than negative 2 or equal to negative 2 and x is less than or equal to 4. Now, if x is greater than or equal to negative 2, it means that negative 2 is going to be a part of the answer. Another digit that is greater than negative 2 is going to be negative 1 and 0 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 but x is less than or equal to 4 so these number will satisfy this inequality here so our answer is going to be d number 8 if q equals a b c how many subset can be obtained from the set Q. Now the formula for a subset is 2 raised to the power of n, where n is the amount of element inside the set. So here we have three elements inside the, the set. So clearly A cannot be the answer. B cannot be the answer. It's between C and D. And C cannot be the answer since the formula is 2 raised to the power of N. So it's going to be D, which is 2 raised to the power of 3. So our answer here is D. Item 9 refers to the following Venn diagram. And as you can see here, we have a Venn diagram with P and Q. In the Venn diagram, the number of element in p is equal to 5 which is this 5 element here and the number of element in q is equal to 9 and the number of element in p union q is equal to 10 what is the number of element in p intersect q right that's going to give us four all right all you need to do is to add the number of element in p plus the number of element in q 
and subtract that from the number of element in P union Q. All right. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe.